Hey, I'm Chris Ralph, the professional prospector, and today we're starting a series on lead. Lead is an underappreciated metal, and historically it's been really important, but you know, there's a lot of toxicity concerns, and you know, of course, if you handle it properly and you do it right, it doesn't need to be a poison. But, uh, you know, lead is, is something that's still pretty much essential to our modern society. And as part of this series, we're going to talk about well, making lead from scratch. We're going to talk about recycling existing lead. And we're going to talk about searching for lead ores because lead often goes along with silver. And, and so when you find lead, you almost always find silver deposits with it. And a lot of lead ores are one or two or three, and sometimes even more percentage of silver. So it can be actually a lot more valuable for the silver in a lead deposit than it is for the lead. But we're going to talk about all that in due time. Lead is still widely used for a lot of different purposes. Most uh, highest amount is car batteries. But in some places of the world, it's still used as a pigment. It was once used widely as a pigment here in the U.S., but uh, because of those toxicity concerns, it's no longer used here in the U.S. But hey, go to China and get them to make white paint. It's probably going to have lead in it. It's also used for sheathing, for cables. It's used for insulation, for radiation. So. You know, if you're going to be in an environment uh, where you're having an x-ray or something like that. You know, when I go to the dentist, I have a chest protector thing that they put on so they can x-ray my teeth. And that chest protector is kind of heavy. It's got lead in it. It's used to shield the radiation from your body. And it's, uh, you know, what the technicians uh, get behind, you know, when they're uh, going to use x-rays or other forms of radiation in treating people for disease or for whatever use you're using radiation for other things lead is a great insulator for radiation of course it's still used for bullets and ammunition uh, very common lots of lead used for that and it's used for diving weights and other kinds of weights that are used in various purposes. So there's still a lot of uses for lead. It's not super duper valuable as a metal, not compared to like gold or silver, but it still has a lot of important industrial uses. And so it's worthwhile to know a little bit of something about lead. It's also used in leaded crystal glass. So if you see some fancy cut glass thing that your grandma used to have and it was kind of heavy but the glass was really bright and sparkly they put lead in glass to make the the glass more beautiful it's used as a filler in a number of things and uh if you buy candy from mexico or india or china you might find that they put some lead in it for filler or maybe just get some lead in it because they're not very careful in the mixing of the product. Historically, lead has been used in cosmetics. In the, uh, the, the distant past, you know, the uh, certain cultures put white face on and made their face really white. Um, a lot of times that was the same white pigment that was used to be used in lead paint here in the U.S. and a lot of other places, but is illegal in some places to use lead as a, a white pigment. It makes a good pigment because it covers things that, you know, it doesn't take a lot of lead to make it really white. It's a white pigment. And, and so it was used in cosmetics in, in certain cultures. Regulatory types think that you shouldn't have any lead, that, you know, lead should be just only in the hands of the elite. And so uh, there used to be lots of sources if you wanted to make diving weights or you wanted to cast your own bullets or that sort of thing. And there was lots of places 10, 20 years ago to go get lead. You'd go to pretty much any tire shop and, uh, you know, buy a bucket or a half bucket anyway of lead wheel weights. No problem. But things have changed. And today, wheel weights are mostly made out of steel or zinc or something like that. Only rarely do you still see lead wheel weights, usually older stuff. It's still possible to, um, if you're at a shooting range, and of course you're there when nobody's shooting, and you're able to make sure that nobody's shooting, 
Um, you can, I've seen people screen out uh, fired bullets. Uh, if you have a hillside and people are shooting into the hillside, um, I've seen people go and screen out the dirt and collect uh, lead bullets from that. And that works. Um, but if you're, if you live in a, a region of the country where everything is flat as a pancake and people are, have a shooting range, well, the bullets just go way out there. And, you know, there's no place where you can find a concentration of them and just screen it out. So the screening of old bullets doesn't work in every place, but some places it does. I don't recommend the, uh, uh handling or recycling of old car batteries. Uh, there's acid in the batteries and there's also soluble lead compounds and you see if the lead is not soluble it's not as dangerous of a poison but if it's soluble like soluble lead salts in a battery you can take that into your body and get lead poisoning rather easily so i strongly recommend against battery recycling if you have the opportunity for lead bullet uh, recycling yeah, you can do that. Now me, as a gold prospector, I'm always out searching with my metal detector and over a period of a couple of years, I gather several pounds of lead bullets and spent lead and I save that stuff up. I mean, I don't throw it away. Um, I save it and recycle it. And I'm gonna do a video on the recycling of lead that's not at a shooting range, but just picked up exploring over areas with a metal detector looking for gold. It's a way, that's how I get most of my lead. But it's harder and harder to get lead. As I mentioned, you can't just go to the car or tire store and get wheel weights. Um, you know, some places you can recycle bullets, but other places that just doesn't work. Um, and so it makes sense that we develop a new way to make our own lead. And we're gonna kind of do it the way the pioneers did, which is to get lead containing minerals and convert them to lead metal. Now to do this, I'm not gonna turn, you know, wood into lead or do some kind of crazy alchemy thing. I'm just taking lead minerals and turning them into lead metal. And the, the main lead mineral around that exists and is out there is a mineral called galena and it's basically a lead sulfide and like i say a lot of times is silver with it and what i'm going to do today is we're going to go through and we're going to convert that lead mineral into lead metal and i'm going to show you the process we're going to go through the whole thing what i'm basically going to do is i'm going to take some galena and i'm going to crush it down and get it to a small size and then i'm going to mix it with a flux that's about, it'll be about equal parts of um, borax and sodium carbonate. And then we'll mix them with the lead and with the crushed galena and we'll fire it up. We'll have some steel in there. And basically what happens is the steel reacts with the, the lead mineral. And what happens is the steel becomes a mineral and the lead turn, and becomes a metal like the steel was. And it basically the steel is more active and so chemically it will displace the lead and it will go into the mineral form and the, the metal that was there of the steel will you know, be, become mineral and the lead that was in the mineral will come out and become metallic lead. Now I mentioned that I am gonna take the silver out of that lead. Now it won't be in this video, but I am gonna do a video of extracting silver from lead and uh, the galena that I collected is from some silver mines in Nevada that were valuable more for their silver than for their lead, although they certainly did produce lead. And I'm going to go through and show you how to extract the silver. I'm not gonna do that in this video. This video is just about the lead. I'm gonna do some more of these smelting runs and accumulate a significant amount of lead. And then I'm gonna take that lead and extract the silver from it. And then I'll have clean lead that I could use for bullet or you know, diving weight casting. And I'll have clean silver that I could send to a, uh, a you know, a, refor a refiner that, that would pay me for the silver. So uh, it's gonna be two steps. This video is the lead, then another video will be done on the silver. Let's take a look at the galena now so that you can have a closer look at this metal. I'm gonna talk about it a little bit 
uh, what galena consists of and, and what it's like and and before we get started so here's a picture of galena you can see that it's gray and metallic looking if you look closely you'll see little kind of plates basically galena crystallizes into a cubic shape and it also cleaves in other words you can it naturally breaks into cubic shapes as well so basically there's three planes uh, of cleavage all at 90 degrees to each other and so they form a cube and a lot of times you'll see the cubic little growths or you'll see the the little plates and if you look closely at these things with the magnification you'll see that there's little square and cubic breakages on this and then here's another piece that's just a larger piece of, of almost solid galena and you can see that there's just little plates and cubic uh, breakages all over this specimen and both of these are really rich in silver and this is the kind of stuff I'm using to make lead out of. So you've had a look at the galena and we talked about it a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and crush that stuff up, mix it up with flux, put it in a crucible and get started with the whole process of converting that lead sulfide mineral into lead metal. The temperatures that it's going to take to accomplish that is around 1850 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a bright red heat, but my furnace is well capable of achieving that. So let's go ahead and get started with doing that. So I've got the Galena all crushed up. I mixed it in a bucket with flux. Like I say, I'm using uh, uh, borax and sodium carbonate. Actually, I'm using like arm and hammer bicarbonate, but if you when you heat bicarbonate, it turns into sodium carbonate. So I've got some scrap iron in the crucible here. I'm gonna put the crushed uh, the crushed galena and flux into the crucible, and then I'll get started burning it up and getting it hot with the furnace. So let me get that all set up, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got the crucible all loaded. You can see that. We'll put it in here. And we'll get it lighted, and when it's hot, of course, we'll pour it into our mold. Okay, now we gotta wait for it to heat up. Okay, we're up to temperature. Let's see if we've got it taken care of. We should have been able to convert the galena that we had in our ores into lead metal. Basically making lead from scratch in a way more or less similar to the way the pioneers did it. Let's pull out the crucible and see what we got. Looks plenty hot to me. Here we go. We're pouring the crucible. That did not that did not seem to go as smooth as I'd hoped. So let's see how it did. Well, we, we didn't make as much lead as I'd hoped. This is only about 100 grams of lead. Good for a few bullets, I guess. But uh, it does work, the process. Uh, it's not what's normally used, but it does work to make lead. Now, this lead has quite a bit of silver in it, and I will, at a future date, do a video about extract. I'll make some more lead, and then do a video about extracting the silver from the lead. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Now most of my videos are about prospecting for gold and finding gold. And if you want to become a prospector and find gold for yourself, I wrote a book about that and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about my book. 
right now. So let me tell you a little bit more about my book. Um, it's called Fistful of Gold, and I wrote it because I want you to be able to go out and find for yourself Fistful of Gold. And uh, you can see that it's a, an encyclopedia with all kinds of information, pictures, and that sort of thing. It's not in color, but uh, uh, color would have cost me a lot more to have printed, and so the book would have cost a lot more. It's for sale on Amazon, and you can pick it up. I'll put a link in the description below. I also serve as the editor for a, a prospecting magazine. It's ICMJ's Prospecting and Mining Journal. And honestly, you should check that out. We've got stories uh, and information, legal stuff, everything you know to increase your skills as a prospector. I write articles in this every month, and a lot of other very experienced prospectors contribute to the magazine as well. So check the magazine out. Also, I have a website, and the website is uh, at nevadaoutbackgems.com. I'll put a link for it in the description below. But there's gobs of information there that you will find useful in your prospecting efforts. Finally, I want to say that I really appreciate your comments and thoughts and even a positive criticism. Don't come on there and just toss out insults because I'll just delete your comments. But if you've got uh, helpful things to say and questions to ask, do write and, and put those in the comments because I answer my comments to people and uh, you'll hear from me in, in, you know, in, in responding to you. Uh, so if you've enjoyed this video and you like what you see and you're interested in uh, finding out more, well then sign up, subscribe, and hit the, uh, the notification bell so they'll let you know when I post new videos. And, you know, like it and share it if, again, you, you see stuff that you really are excited about. And I'll be coming out with lots more new videos. And so we'll see you again real soon.